As far back as the 16th century BC in Mesopotamia, windmills were described as used for generating mechanical energy to power machinery and were horizontal windmills, which had long vertical drive shafts with six to 12 rectangular sails covered in reed matting or cloth arranged vertically around the drive shaft, thus catching the wind horizontally. The first windmills in Europe began to appear in sources dating to the 12th century AD and were used to grind grain and pump water. And these windmills were configured largely as we see today and laid out with the shaft horizontal and the blades attached so that they rotated in a vertical plane. American colonists used windmills to grind grain, to pump water, and to cut wood at sawmills. Homesteaders and ranchers installed thousands of wind pumps as they settled the western United States. In 1887, the first wind turbine used for the production of electricity was built in Cleveland, Ohio. The blades of this design were 17 meters or 56 feet in diameter and produced about 12 kilowatts of electricity. Today, most wind devices that we see are wind turbines, which generate electricity, but in some areas, windmills are still used for grinding or pumping water. Fast forward to the end of 2020 where China boasts the world's largest capacity for wind energy, totaling at just over 288 gigawatt. The United States is second, totaling to over 117 gigawatt. Wind power plants produce electricity by having an array of wind turbines pointed in the same direction. The placement of a wind power plant is impacted by factors such as wind conditions, the surrounding terrain, access to electric transmission, and other regional considerations. In a utility-scale wind plant, each turbine generates electricity and is connected to a substation. The substation then transfers the electricity to the regional electrical grid, which then powers our communities. The wind turbine converts wind energy into electricity using the aerodynamic force from the rotor blades, which work like an airplane wing or helicopter rotor blade. The elevated rotor on which the blades are mounted connects to the front side of the gearbox that increases the rotation speed. The rotor connects to the generator, either directly if it's a direct drive turbine, or through a shaft and a series of gears that speed up the rotation from the rotor shaft and allow for a physically smaller generator. This transition of aerodynamic force to rotation of a generator creates electricity. The four vital parts of the wind turbine are the foundation, the tower sections, the cell or hub, drivetrain, and blades. Foundations are critical to the success of a wind turbine project. They support the wind turbine structure, and the foundation types vary based on subsurface soil and rock conditions and the size of the wind turbines. These are the most common types of wind turbine foundations. Spreader foot, the pile group, anchored footing, and single pier. Wind turbine towers are produced in varying heights, with the average being at roughly 160 feet or 50 meters, and the tallest surpassing 660 feet or 200 meters. Most towers consist of three sections, with the taller towers totaling seven sections and all assembled on the project site. Tower sections are fabricated from tubular steel and are usually coated with a zinc-based finish, epoxy, and urethane layers to provide protection from the sun's ultraviolet rays. The average tower section weight typically exceeds 40 tons. Here we see the base tower sections and the upper tower section being installed. The nacelle houses the wind turbine's gearbox, generator, and electric controllers. The hub is the nose cone shaped component that connects the blades to the nacelle. The drivetrain on a turbine with a gearbox is comprised of the rotor, main bearing, main shaft, gearbox, and generator. The drivetrain converts the low speed high torque rotation of the turbine's rotor, blades and hub assembly into electrical energy. Most turbines have three blades which are made mostly of fiberglass. Turbine blades vary in size, but a typical land-based wind turbine has blades over 170 feet or 52 meters in length, which is about half the length of a football field. When wind flows across the blade, the air pressure on one side of the blade decreases. The difference in air pressure across the two sides of the blade creates both lift and drag. The force of the lift is stronger than the drag and this causes the rotor to spin. 
Wind turbine blades can reach speeds in excess of 160 miles per hour when in operation and therefore require robust construction. Offshore wind power or wind energy is a generation of electricity through wind farms in bodies of water, usually at sea. Unlike the typical use of the term offshore in the marine industry, offshore wind power includes inshore water areas such as lakes, fjords, and sheltered coastal areas as well as deeper water areas. The first offshore wind farm in the world was Vindeby Offshore Wind Farm, erected in 1991 off the coastal town of Vindeby on the Danish island of Lolland. This wind farm operated for 25 years before being decommissioned. The advantage of locating wind turbines offshore is that wind or sea breeze is much stronger and consistent off the coast because land heats up much faster than water under solar radiation. A sea breeze is a common occurrence along coasts after sunrise. By contrast, a land breeze or offshore breeze is the reverse effect. Dry land cools more quickly than water, and after sunset, a sea breeze dissipates and the wind instead flows from the land toward the sea. And unlike wind over land, offshore breezes can be strong in the afternoon, matching the time when people are using the most electricity. Offshore turbines can also be located close to the load centers along the coasts, such as large cities, eliminating the need for new long-distance transmission lines. Most offshore wind farms employ fixed foundation wind turbines in relatively shallow water. As of 2020, floating wind turbines for deeper waters were in the early phase of development and deployment. However, there are several disadvantages of offshore installations related to more expensive installation, difficulty of access, and harsher conditions for the units. Locating wind turbines offshore exposes the units to high humidity, salt water, and salt water spray, which negatively affect service life, cause corrosion and oxidation, increase maintenance and repair costs, and in general make every aspect of installation and operation much more difficult, time-consuming, more dangerous, and far more expensive than sites on land. Sustained high-speed operation and generation also increases wear, maintenance, and repair requirements proportionally. In 2020, the United States offshore wind energy development and operational sector grew to a potential generating capacity of 35 gigawatts. The United States is projecting growth of another 30 gigawatts of offshore wind energy by 2030. In 2020, global offshore wind energy capacity reached 56 gigawatts. Global offshore wind energy is expected to accelerate with forecasts indicating an increased global cumulative offshore wind capacity to 215 gigawatts by 2030. The United States wind energy is here to stay. Overall projected growth wind energy, both land-based and offshore, in the United States will double to 225 gigawatt by 2030. Projected combined growth to 404 gigawatt by 2050.